everybody, and welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. The team's tournament is about to begin. We start the match with a play-in to get into the tournament. I am Christian Harloff. Thank you for joining us, and I am joined, as always, by Mark Ellis. Mark, the play-in match, the singles tournament is done. It's gone. It's over. Now we have to find out who's going to be playing the champions, but we got to get through this nine-team tournament, and we start with the play-in. Yeah, it's nothing to get through, Christian. If anything, I think everyone watching should relish this opportunity for a play-in match. Why? Because you might be watching the next champion of a Schmodown tournament. We've seen the runs that play-in fodder has gone on in a Star Wars tournament, in a Geekdom Singles, all of it. We've seen deep journeys into the tournament, possibly winning the whole thing. Will that happen again in the team's tournament? We're about to kick this play-in match off, and whew, the squads we have assembled today I don't know who to pick. I don't know who to root for. I just know a lot of correct movie trivia answers are about to be given. You just said it in the play-in match. I mean, our winner of the big, the massive tournament that we just had was Adam Collins. He was the winner of it, and he was a play-in match. Well, now we're going to have some uh, newer teams, a lot of newer teams in this tournament, and we start by the play-in match. The dungeon has had a bit of a rough go. Their rookie, their rookie sensation Parker was didn't get as far as they thought he was going to get. Their uh, unbeatable champion Smets lost his first title defense against Chandru. They haven't had a lot of success this year. Eric Zipper has been their biggest point getter of the year. He had a great, yeah, he had a nice run in, in inner geekdom. He uh, he did well in singles, and he's here in teams. He is uh, he has been the best player for the dungeon bar none. Adam Witt has been a great coach on the sidelines for the team also. So pairing them up, these two misfits, putting them together, it is a combination that could prove very successful for the dungeon. Yeah, but Christian, when you look at the dungeon, they've fallen on hard times, as you mentioned, and maybe it has nothing to do with the competitors, or in this case, the team of competitors. Could it be the manager, Kaiser? What's he been doing in Vegas? Is he gambling away any money that he might have won from betting on his previous matches? Is he the Pete Rose of the Schmodown? But then on the other side, you got Perry Nemiroff and Haley Fouch teaming up in the justice of Koi Jandra, who, as we saw in the singles tournament, had a nice run with the quirky Mercs, and you don't get mouthier as far as correct movie answers than Perry and Haywood. I am, uh, and and maybe I'm showing my card too, this is one of the teams I'm most excited for. Uh, I And for a lot of different reasons, because both Perry and Haley, I think they both would say that they know they there's this fire in the both of them. Like I can tell you from from talking to them behind the scenes that I remember Haley coming up to me and saying, I want to play in singles. I want to play more teams. Like she wants to play more. She had they, she had a good run with the Scream Queens. Perry Nemiroff has had a brand new life for the Schmodown. And she credits Koi Jandrew and working with the Mercs in general. But you saw what she did in that singles tournament, beating Mike Kalinowski and then almost beating. Uh, uh, Mark Riley. She's back. She's back with a vengeance and teaming her up with her witching hour uh, co-host, uh, Miss Haley Fouch. This is going to be an interesting combination. It's the same thing. Who knows the game the best? Who's going to play the best? Who's going to be the most committed? Who wants it more? We're going to find out and we're going to find out exactly how we got here today. Right now. This kid played a lights-out match. I can't wait for him and Witt to get together and play tag. Get this guy ready for a team's tournament. It's a loss today, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be a win down the road for him somewhere on. I just rewatched Fury Road for probably the 250th time, and it's become clear to me that that's where we are. We have traveled the wasteland, liberating toilet paper from the toilet paper warlords and giving it to the citizens and socially distancing their heads from their bodies. Adam Witt is the dungeon MVP this year, stepping in as a player, a coach, a manager. So when he tags up with Zip, we're gonna run through the league. Adam Witt has been helping me adjust to the wasteland that is Los Angeles. He got me the spray for when we win. <coughs> oh my God. You've heard of the Odd Couple, Final Exam, the Founding Fathers. These are known quantities within the Schmodown. To 
Today, we introduce an unknown quantity. I'm gonna come back and keep playing if you'll have me. I am pairing Perry Nemiroff with the great Haley Fouch and forming the Witching Power. So while Dewey's finishing setting up all of the Halloween decorations, how about we talk a little witching power right now? You wanna see how she just played now? Wait until her next round, wait until she has her friend, fellow movie trivia genius in her corner. I played in the single matches. I discovered strategy and also playing the game for fun again. Now I'm jumping into playing a team's match with one of my absolute best friends. You've seen how scary Perry Nemiroff can be, and she's about to play the game of a lifetime today with Haley Fouch. The witching power thinks uh, some spells are gonna protect them, like this is a, a lovely jaunt through a mystical forest. We looked around, and we saw what the world looked like, and we said, the apocalypse is here, so we're gonna act like it. And you know what I think? I think this is a lovely day to win at some movie trivia. Look, that's it. It says it. This is this is big. Is can the dungeon win the whole thing, the whole package, the whole prize? No, they can't. They're mathematically they just they just don't have enough wind in them. But there can be something to be said about taking this tournament and for Zipper. Zipper's going to be a high pick for people next season. So you know whether or not this is is he going to stay with the dungeon? We don't know. But what's going to happen? What if him and, and Wit can win the championship? And if Haley and Perry can do it, they're going to put Koi in an interesting position because of the Bibiani and uh, and the kid of it all. So a lot to happen, a lot to be said, and I can't wait to get this match started. Oh, it's going to be great, Christian. Spoiler warning right now. I'm going to give away the ending of a couple witch movies. Will this match end like The Witch, where you see witches flying on broomsticks high and ready for their next conquest? Or will it end like The Wizard of Oz, where... Unfortunately, Perry and Haley melt into nothing because Adam and Eric were able to dump some water on him. Christian, we're about to find out. Before we meet our competitors, it's time to bring in the managers of each faction. We welcome Coy and reluctantly say Kaiser as well. Uh, Christian, you have the opening salvo. Yeah, well, let's start with you, Coy. Coy, you've had a, a nice run here overall this year. Both Bibiani and the kid did very well in teams. They did very well in uh, in the singles tournament. You had good runs in the inner geekdom. For your first year managing, you know, there were some rough spots, but for the most part, it's been a really good season. How confident are you, because obviously Shazam was in that title match, that Perry and Haley are the team to take the Mercs to the next shot? Well, I, I feel like Perry... It was was my favorite underdog story in a season of underdog stories. I've used that expression quite a bit, but it's always been true. And I feel like Haley is this equally untapped quantity. So at the beginning of the season, people were doubting Perry, and then they quickly learned how wrong they were. And now I feel like people just don't know what to make of Haley because she plays incredibly well, just hasn't played a lot. So now the combination of both of them, my knowing how much they know by working with them on movie talk and just talking about films in general, this is going to be quite the match for anyone to keep up with, and I see them going all the way, so I'm just excited to see them get into it. And there's two rules in the Quirky Mercs, much like Fight Club. They're the same rule. One and two is have fun, and they're going to have fun today. Yeah, uh, Kaiser, on the other side of the spectrum here, some folks are alleging that you might have a gambling problem. Others are just saying, no, Kaiser has a competition problem. But uh, my question, simple, what, what have you been doing? Well... I left the desert wasteland of Las Vegas, which you all know, only to arrive in a very dystopian Los Angeles, overrun by motorcycle gangs and false comic book prophets like Koi Jandrew, <laughs> who, who, who apparently also tried to hijack the city's fresh water supply while I was gone. I got news for you, Koi, that ain't being quirky. That's just being deceitful, okay? 
But the good news is my good friend Max Rockatansky picked me up at the Greyhound station. So here we are. You know, I don't even know who we're who we're playing today. I think uh, what is it? The the Real Witches of Westwood or something? I mean, sounds like a WB reality show. But hey, the misfits are here. We're ready to play. They've been locked in a London a London dungeon since March, and I'm ready to see what they got. Now they're stateside. We're all back. Well, I mean, look, guys. I mean say this here too as we know that zipper has really been he's been your ace in the hole here he's been the guy that's been able to get you any points at all this season so uh you know same question that i directed towards coy how important is this for this win here for the misfits because you might have to take a, a stick of dynamite and blow this whole thing up if this doesn't go the way you want it to first of all uh mark thank you for all the help you gave me when i was down and out in vegas um the, the guy across from the table from you not so much never done anything for me, but thanks for sending me the Western Union when I needed it. Uh, I think Zipper is probably the most electric player in the dungeon right now. Uh, Adam Witt is certainly our team MVP. He's coming in as a coach. He's coming in as a player. These two have been waiting for this match since January, since they both got drafted at the Comedy Store. They looked at each other from across the room and said, hey, let's take a run at this thing. Um, we, we came up with about 65 different names. None of them flew. And now the Misfits are here to, to represent. I like our chances today. I think the Witches of East Wick are going back home to Koi's Tool Shed and maybe to make some, you know, some Star Wars dolls or whatever you guys do on weekends. I don't know. All right, well, look, good luck to the both of you, uh, to both Koi and Kaiser. You know what? Because I, I really, what what could I have done for you that would make you feel better? I mean, All right, Koi, uh, good luck. <laughs> And we will see you in just a moment, my friend. All right. All right, Mark. So our managers have done whatever they do. Well, Koi did. And we are ready to bring in our teams. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I want to note, I did not knowingly send a Western Union telegram and money to Kaiser. He uh, lied to me and said he was a foreign prince who had just struck oil. What was I supposed to do? Makes sense. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Introducing first, representing the quirky Mercs, making their schmodown team's debut. Scary Harry. Never wrong. Haley, the Firestarter Fouch, the Witching Power. Unbelievable. Way back. Perry, I got to tell you, you and I texted the other day. I told you how great it is to have you back in the league, but you've played in more matches in the last couple of months than I think you have in your entire Schmodown career. How's it feel? I never thought that was going to happen in a million years, but I feel like this team match in particular was the easiest one for me to say yes to simply because I am sitting here playing Schmodown with one of my best friends and my witching hour partner. It's just, this is a match made in heaven. I feel so comfortable. I'm so happy to be here for the Mercs. And more importantly, I'm so happy to be playing with Haley. Yeah, Haley, it seems like there's a lot of excitement about this team chemistry, but I got to ask you, do you feel like your various strengths in movie trivia know how complement each other, or do you both have the same strong points? Uh, it's a good question. I think about it, obviously, leading up to the match, but I think there's one thing I've definitely learned from doing our podcast is that we often have rather opposing tastes. We'll be on two sides of the same issue when it comes to movies. So I, I absolutely think she knows a lot of things that I don't know. And I, I I don't know if the movies I love get asked about in the Schmodown a lot, but I know a lot of weird stuff. Oh, Haley, let me also ask you this, because obviously we haven't seen you this season um, and being able to make your debut here again or coming back in teams, and you're coming back against a guy that you had a phenomenal singles match against last season in Eric Zipper. So is one of the kind of factors in this is to get a little sweet revenge on uh, on the Z-Man? Oh, I'm so boring. I'm not really revenge oriented, but I look forward to seeing him. I haven't seen any of you, by the way. Lovely to see your beautiful faces. I miss you all. Um, no, I mean, I, I would prefer to win, certainly. But, you know, we started as a team up in anarchy so i'm always kind of like i'm never gonna be 
Ooh, zipper, down with zipper. He started as my teammate too. But yeah, I want to win. Great point. All right, well, Perry, Haley, good luck. We will see you in just a moment as we await your opponents. All right, the witching power making their debut and now. And their opponents representing the dungeon making their Schmodown team debut. Adam the Razor, Wit, and Eric the Z-Man, Zipper the Misfits. Exactly what we were talking about here. Look at these two straight out of the Mad Max films. Adam the Razor Wit and Eric Z-Man Zipper. Here they are. All right. So, Z-Man, look, let's start with you, dude. You had a good run so far uh, this season. You're playing really well. Teaming up with Wit here, playing in three di different divisions. Does it take anything out of you or does it, does it keep you motivated? Well, as you can see, I think, if anything, 2020 is catching up to me. Like, I know I've had a pretty good season, but I've also been stuck in this post-apocalyptic wasteland that is my apartment. Uh, we're about 200 days in the quarantine, which I think means I've watched Fury Road 200 times. Uh, and you know what? Everything else is out the window. Like, I'm, we're just going to keep the train rolling. The apocalypse is here. We are bringing pain and destruction with us. Let's do this. I'm ready. Uh, Christian, it's good to see both gentlemen escape from that basement in Pulp Fiction. Adam, let me ask you the next question. When you look at the witching power, your opponents here today, what do you think you need to do to conquer their ability? Well, uh, you know, uh, Zip and I have uh, really embraced the post-apocalyptic lifestyle. Uh, obviously, the dungeon is out of contention here, and so we are here just to lay waste uh, to, uh, to, to the rest of the brackets if we can, uh, just to cause maximum destruction, starting with our esteemed opponents. All right, well, we're going to see those esteemed opponents in just a moment here. We're going to say good luck to both the Z. Yeah, Zip. Oh, sorry, I just, you know, now that I am a little less encumbered, uh, I had all these mean things ready to say about the witching power, and then Haley said nice things about me. Uh, so, you know, uh, thank you. But uh, I defeated her once, and I'm ready to do it again. She's very fun to play against, and uh, it's especially fun when I win. So Adam and I are ready. Let's do this. All right. So the Z-Man and the wit, and here we go. The witching power is here. The competitors have entered the virtual battlefield, Mark. Let's get to the rules of round number one. You see, kids, doesn't matter if you're a witch or you're in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, you can still talk trash and be cordial. The rules of round number one. Eight questions are asked to the field. You may not rely on the strength of your teammate to answer questions in round one. It's an individual exercise. However, every point you accrue will be added to your team's total. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. Each question is worth one point. As soon as we ask it, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Once we ask you by name, please show what you wrote on your whiteboard with whatever utensil you prefer. At the same time, you verbalize it into your microphone. I'll remind each team of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. JTE rules give you another 15 seconds to get that correct answer from the back of your head to the front of your head or the front of your face mask if you're wearing it during the match. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three round match. Either team member may initiate a challenge. We'll bring in your manager. They'll confirm and ratify that said challenge is taking place. And note for the host, Christian and I will not show favoritism to either team, even if we went drinking at the Burbank Beer Festival with one of them until the wee hours of dawn. Hmm. All right, so I start here and I ask Perry, are you ready? I am ready. Zipper. Witness me. Haley. To the next beer fest. And Adam Witt. Destruction. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. All right, round number one. Question number one in the realm of action adventure. Beyond Thunderdome was the third film in which franchise? It's an interesting one to kick off with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it's not 20 bucks I slipped your work. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pans down and Adam. It would be embarrassing to miss. Mad Max. Correct. Perry. Mad Max. Zip. It would be very embarrassing to miss. Mad Max. And Haley. Also, it would just be embarrassed to miss in general. Mad Max. <laughs> there we go. So, tie game as we get to the next one. Yeah, now Kaiser owes me even more money for that Western Union. Your next category is in the world of the 90s, which is the 1990s. And here's the question. Which James Bond actor plays King Arthur in the 1995 film First Night? Uh, it broke my heart when I was in like eighth grade or something and my teacher told me that whole King Arthur thing, all made up. It's garbage. Fine. Yeah. Never Three. happened. Three, it's not a nice person. Two. And one, Perry Nimrov. Pierce Brosnan. That is incorrect. Uh, Zipper. Sean Connery. Yes. And Haley? Sean Connery. Yes. And Adam? Sir Sean Connery. All right. So the witching power misses one, and we see ourselves 4 3 as we get to our next question. Next question here is from the world of dramas. What 1992 film stars Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman as an Irish couple? who immigrate to the U.S. during the 1890s and try to acquire land. Man, for them playing an Irish couple, that's a stretch. <laughs> of the imagination? Yes, you are right, sir. And f five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Haley. Far and away? That is correct. Uh, Adam Witt. Far and away. Yes. Uh, Perry. I'm trying to not not write anything, so I just randomly wrote out of sight. <laughs> All right. And Zipper. Good movie. I did not have it. Did not have it also. Okay. So only Adam and Haley get it there. So Misfits still keep a one point lead. Five, four. As we get to our next question mark. That's in the world of romantic comedies. I conveniently shortened it to rom coms. You're welcome. For one point, here's the question. Andrew Lincoln holds up cards with love messages on them for what actress to read in the film Love Actually? Which again, it's a huge Christmas hit. Not in my household. No, thank you. No, thank you. Nope, I'll take Scrooge, duh. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, zip. Kira Knightley. Yes, Haley. Kira Knightley. Yep. Adam? Don't have it. Didn't have it. Perry? Kira Knightley. That is correct. We see ourselves tied now. 6-6. Six, six. And only Haley is still perfect after that miss by Wit. And we get to our next question. Our next question here, which is fantasy sci-fi. Frank Marshall directed what 1995 sci-fi adventure film based on a novel by Michael Crichton starring Laura Linney Ernie Hudson and Bruce Campbell. I wonder what your favorite sci-fi movie is, Christian. I'll, I'll tell you mine. It's uh, any of the Star Wars movies. Great science fiction. Sci-fi fantasy, sure. Great science fiction, yeah. Sci-fi fantasy. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Adam Witt. Uh, Amy Love Trivia, Congo. Yes. Perry. I want a green drop drink, Congo. Yes. Zip. Another reference, Congo. <laughs> and Haley. Cody's oh, perfect. I said Spear. Uh, which one did you have? I'm sorry. I had it wrong. I said Spear. And okay. I put it the good place. All right. So we still see our. So we still now. Witching power down by one. Eight, seven. Eight, seven. As we get to our next question mark, uh, number six. That's right. We're going to put that Congo question on the endangered species list. Your next query for a point is in the world of comedies. There's nothing to laugh about these days, period. Not false. Your question. What 2019 comedy stars actresses Caitlin Deaver and Beanie Feldstein as high school students on the eve of their graduation? Just a reminder to competitors, once you're done writing down, make sure your hands are visible, please. And five, 
four, three, two, one. Pants down, hands up, please. And starting with Perry. Book smart. Yes. Zip. So good. Book smart. Yep. Haley. Book smart. And Wit. A book is smart. That is correct. All right. So Misfits keeping their one point lead here, 10 9, as we get to our next question. Question seven Horror slash thriller. Toby Hooper directed this 1982 Steven Spielberg produced horror film starring Craig T. Nelson, Zelda Rubenstein, and Joe Beth Williams. You know, Christian, I could totally see these names uh, swapping competitors. Because I can see Adam and Eric as Wiccan, and I could see Haley and Perry as Misfits. That's true. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and zip. Poltergeist. Yes, Haley. Poltergeist. Yep. Wit. Throwback to a time when TVs went off. Poltergeist. <laughs> Perry. Poltergeist. All right, so everybody in it, what a battle we have so far. 12-11, Misfits holding their one-point lead as we get to our final question in round number one, Mark. And I'd say that question for Perry and Haley almost made up for that Mad Max question, <laughs> number one. <laughs> Your final question in round number one is in the world of animated movies. Could be drawn by hand, some stop motion, claymation, computer, what have you. Here's the query. Ray Romano... Dennis Leary and John Leguizamo voice prehistoric creatures in what 2002 animated film? Uh, I just named three comedians. Which one would you prefer to see on stage, Christian? Um, five, four, three. Nice dodge. Three, one. Pens down, please. And we start here with Haley. Ice Age? Correct. Adam Witt. Uh, I'll put a different thing at the end of mine. Ice Age. Uh, Perry. <laughs> Ice Age. And Zip. Ice Age. <laughs> well, there you go. 14-13. Good round for both teams as we get into round number two, Mark. Round number two is known as the Wheel Round, the Wheel of Fate, Doom, and Justice. And ladies and gentlemen, wouldn't you know it, we got a sponsored wheel for today's match. The entire wheel sponsored by beloved Schmodown patron, Justin Roby. Everybody watching or competing or hosting, give a round of applause for Justin. Thank you so much for your patronage. We appreciate all of our Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon members. We also have a sponsored Slice. So the new releases Slice is sponsored by another patron. Should either team spin new releases and decide to keep it for questioning, we'll say the name of that patron now. <clears throat> now let's talk about that wheel because it is the wheel of fate, doom, and justice. Each team gets to spin at the wheel. Once you settle on a category, six questions. Team format, six questions will be asked to the team. Team members may confer on each and every question before answering. Questions worth two points. If you need multiple choice, ask us. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Because this is the team format and it's in the Lawnmower Man virtual reality world, the opposite team that is not currently fielding questions will leave the stream if there are any steals in play. Once we bring the team back after questioning, we will ask them all of the steal opportunity questions. All right, so we're going to drop out Perry, Haley, and Coy. All right, Kaiser, you got 60 seconds to talk to your team to decide if you want to go first or second, starting now. You know, I called the accounting department yesterday, and uh, the Schmodown, when I asked them where my check was, they said far and away, so I don't really know how to interpret <laughs> that. But um, I'll hold out hope. What do you guys think? How you, what are you feeling? My preference is always second, if if, if that's on the table. Hey, but if, I'm if that's your preference, Zip, then I'm, I can go either way. Colonel Mohawk, you like that plan? I like that, my fedora friend, Captain right. Fedora. How much time do we have left? Thirty I'd like seconds. Talk, I'd like to talk about this paycheck issue, but maybe we can have that conversation <laughs> offline. Well, yeah. All right, so you want to go first, boys? What are we saying here? I said second. Second. Yeah. Sure. Why am I listening that to your, your that team? That was a true question. question. Thank you, you for want, translating, Christian. Who's managing this team, Christian? Me or I don't you? know. I don't think you know. Right, it's we'll hard to hear with all the mushroom clouds and the going off in the background. So, 
All right. Well, it right. looks like the witching power is going to go first. All right. So, Kaiser, you will be able to stay in the waiting room. Make sure your hands are up at all times. I'm sure you hear that often. Uh, and I'm going to put Zipper and Wit in the waiting room. But guys, you need to go into a separate room as we remove you now. Please go into the other room. Again, Kaiser, make sure your hands are visible. Otherwise, we will deduct your team a point. Um, thank you. So, um, all right. So, waiting for... Here comes Koi and the witching power. All right. And have 60 seconds to talk to your team. Koi, starting now. So, first off, excellent work. Uh, Perry, I love that you immediately bounced back from, like, I saw the moment of doubt and then remembered we are here to have fun and you didn't let any of those. Thank you, Haley. Welcome back. No cold bones whatsoever. Diving back into playing great. How you guys feeling? I got a Congo question. You didn't have to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> and and Poltergeist doing great. Uh, so I always like going first. I think this is a solid opportunity with the things on the wheel. I feel very strong about most of the slices. Uh, and I also like momentum. So I feel very good about us going first in the wheel. How do you feel about that? I, I'm in agreement. I. I think we have like a good chance, even though we're going first and one thing isn't eliminated, to still get something that we're strong in. So I think it's it would have been a win-win for us either way. I like win-wins. All right, Haley, ready to dance? Let's do this. Yeah. All right. All right, here's the wheel. The wheel is up. Here's the first spin by the witching power. Spin is in. That's a great pen map stock would say. All right. Here it goes. Looking for new releases to say the name of that patron member. Uh, disaster films. 60 seconds to decide, starting now. It's, so it's a very broad category, which could be a positive or a negative. What's your instinct? This is probably one of the ones that I think I'm more positive on, but again, with the broad nature of the category, I, I'm, I'm caught in the middle on it. Like hey, I, I feel like we could do better. We could also definitely do worse. So um, I'm a bit torn. So if we're looking at it on a bell curve, do you feel like we're closer to better or worse? Is this like there's a 50% worse and 50% better or, or the ones that are worse, substantially worse, et cetera? Do you know what I mean? I think I'm still in the middle of that curve. <laughs> I think it's, a to it's a toss up. I think it's a toss up for both of us. And if we're we're tossing a coin right now, Koi, you're our coin. What do we do? 10 seconds. Uh, I say spin again for, for the sake of hoping for better. I'm, I'm always optimistic. Let's dance. Let's see what happens. Spin it All again. Right. So the spin is in. Whatever they get here, they're going to have six questions in the realm of. And here is the spin. Hey, we, we've seen I, magic. I always hope we find something more. Kurt Russell. All right. Kurt Russell movies. It is. Kurt Russell Ooh. movies. It is. All right. So, all right. Kaiser, we're about to ask some questions here. So, hands up. Same thing, Koi. We're going to put you in the waiting room. Same thing with you, please. Please have your hands up. All right. Ladies, six questions in the realm of Kurt Russell. I love him so much. All right. Here is the first question In what film will you find Bill Paxton and Sam Elliott playing Kurt Russell's brothers? Nothing. You've got nothing? Mm -mm. All right, I don't feel good about this, so multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Wyatt Earp, B, Soldier, C, Backdraft, D, Tombstone? Do you have any inkling? My gut said Wyatt Earp. That's what my gut initially said, so I feel like the fact that you felt the same way makes me want to go with it. Okay. All right, A, final answer. A is an apple. That is incorrect, so the opponents will have a one-point steal opportunity. All right, question number two. Question number two, here it is. All right, Kurt Russell plays a character named Ego in what film? It's Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. All right, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, final answer. Two points. All right, question three. In what 80s film did Kurt Russell co-star with Meryl Streep? I don't know it off the top of my head, do you? I think it's Silkwood, but I'm not 100%. Do I think that's a big steal five, I'm wrong. Four, three. Multiple choice. Multiple choice, all right. A, uh, is it The Mean Season? B, Postcards from the Edge? C, Falling in love or D, Silkwood? 
Silkwood. 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 All right. Yeah. D, D Silkwood. Final answer. Correct for one point. All right. That was question number three. Here is the next one. All right. Who directed Kurt Russell in the 1991 thriller Backdraft? I don't feel good about that. Nope. Multiple choice, please. Is it A, Ron Howard, B, Tony Scott, C, Rennie Harlan, D, Peter Himes? Do you have anything? Not really. For, for whatever reason, I wanted to say Tony Scott, but I really don't feel confident in it. I don't know. Five, four. You guys should go with it? Three. Four. Two. All right. B, Tony Scott, final answer. That is incorrect. Yeah. All right. Um, so the next question here, that was question, that was question four. Here's question five. Kurt Russell played a reporter in what 1985 film directed by Philip Borsos? Absolutely not. Multiple choice. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely not. A, absence of malice. B, under fire. C, the mean season. D, the killing fields. I do know that the killing fields is about journalism. <laughs> I think that's that's more than I have right now, so I like it. Okay, D, the killing field. That is incorrect. Well, hell. <laughs> so we are going to our next one. Disaster movies right now. I know, I know. We are really... <laughs> All right, here's the final one. Here's the final question. Here it is. What famous comedic actor stars opposite Kurt Russell as a character named Jack Dundee in the 1986 football comedy, The Best of Times? I don't have anything. That'll be a multiple choice, please. Is it A, Billy Crystal, B, Steve Martin, C, Chevy Chase, D, Robin Williams. I got nothing. Any gut feeling? Five. Not especially, no. Three. Chevy Chase. That is incorrect. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, a, that was the round there for the witching power after six questions. All right, we're going to give the opponents an opportunity to come back. You guys can stick around to watch the steal opportunities, and then you'll have to drop out after they spin their wheel. All right, so we're going to drop, going to drop out. All right, let's bring back the misfits, please, guys. You're going to have some steal opportunities here. Oh, fantastic! Uh, okay, so let us start here i what i will do for multiple choice i'm going to give you the question the multiple choice and let you know what your opponents chose that they got incorrect okay all right here, here is category is kurt russell yes kurt kurt russell all right here's the first question in what film will you find bill paxton and sam elliott playing kurt russell's brothers a Wyatt Earp, B Soldier, C Backdraft, D Tombstone. Your opponents chose Wyatt Earp. Oh, uh, it's 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 Tombstone, right? It is, it is, it is. I mean, that's uh, I see, I see how they made that mistake. It's Tombstone. Yeah, final answer, Tombstone. Final answer, Tombstone. Correct for a one point steal. All right, here is the next question. Here's the next question. Who directed Kurt Russell? In the 1991 thriller Backdraft, A. Ron Howard, B. Tony Scott, C. Rennie Harlan, D. Peter Hyams. Your opponents chose Tony Scott. It would be the director of Far and Away. It would be Backdraft, right? I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Ron Howard. Ron, so we're going with Ron Howard? Yeah, that was A, right? It was Ron Howard? Uh, we can just say Ron Howard and it was still. Final cool. answer, Ron Howard. Final answer, Ron Howard. Correct for one point. All right. Correct for one point. All right. Here's the next question for you guys. Here it is. Kurt Russell plays a reporter in what 1985 film directed by Philip Borsos? Was it A, 
absence of malice, B, under fire, C, the mean season, D, the killing fields. Your opponents chose the killing fields. Oh, wow. Uh, 85. Uh, can we get those uh, options again? You can get the multiple one without it costing you to steal. Can I, can I get the multiples again? It's 85. Yeah. A, absence of malice. B, under fire. C, the mean season. D, the killing fields. And the director, I think he said, was Peter Orso. Peter Orso. Which doesn't really help me at all. Um, and they answered the mean season? They said the killing fields. I think Four. it... Um, Three. What are we going with? Want to go mean season? C. One. C. Final answer. C. Final answer is correct for one point. The, the mean season. Sorry, that was my that was my first thought when we started it, and then we started having a conversation. I was like, ah, uh, whatever C was. <laughs> All right. So uh, here is your final steal opportunity. Final steal opportunity here. What famous comedic actor stars opposite Kurt Russell as a character named Jack Dundee in the 1986 football comedy, The Best of Times? Is it A, Billy Crystal, B, Steve Martin, C, Chevy Chase, D, Robin Williams. Your opponents chose Chevy Chase. That's D, Robin Williams. Do you concur? Zip? Yeah, I concur. Yeah. Yeah. Robin <laughs> Williams, final answer. Correct for one more point. So all the skill opportunities, and you see yourselves now with an 18-16 lead as we bring up your wheel. We bring in Kaiser here. 60 seconds to discuss. Uh, Ooh, it's all in the reflexes, boys. It's all in the reflexes. <laughs> 60 seconds here, Kaiser, to talk to them before they spin. Well, boys, we know what we like. You know what we'd rather not have, though. We don't really have too many things that scare us here but let's give it a let's give it a whirl let's see what we got we got some good momentum i'm proud of you guys you're coming in like the banshee bandits that you are we're gonna get fresh water for la back from koi today let's do this all right all right here's the spin for the misfit we're looking fresh at water for the whole city of los angeles on the dungeon they find something that they like and they can give themselves in a the knockout range but they might land on something directors Director, 60 seconds to decide, starting now. Personally, I don't like that category. Personally, I like that category a whole lot. What do you think, Zip? I also like it. Um, I I there's, I there's would take it over a lot of the other stuff on here. So I think I so. I see a lot of things I'd, I'd rather have directors. Let, let's go with directors. Well, okay, let's... just real quick, before you, just, just so you know, they're gonna go deep on you. You know, he's gonna pull out some sneaky crap on you. So as long as you're ready for it and can get him in the multiple choice, which I think yeah. you can. That's the thing. You can get him in the multiple choice and let's go for it. And, and, we're, and we can we can drop a couple to multiple choice without sweating it at this point, which is good. Yes. It's a good we're place in a good to position be position to go okay. multiple and play it safe. So uh, we will yeah. go final answer directors on the wheel. All right, perfect. All right, so we're gonna remove Kaiser. All right, so we are now going to ask both Perry and Haley to move to the other room, and they will move to the other room. And Coy, you can stay. Make sure that your hands are up, please. And we will get word once Haley and Perry have joined the other room. All right, Mark. So the witching power has gone to the other room here, too, and the misfits are ready to go. That's right, Christian. If you give me a second, I'm still recovering from the massive amount of leadership we just witnessed from Kaiser telling his competitors what category he liked. Very inspiring. And now the questions that at the end of this round could see a knockout victory. Yes, folks, we are in knockout range with the Misfits enjoying a two point lead as we enter their round number two in the world of directors. Gentlemen, your first question of six for two points. Who directed the 2003 sports biopic Sea biscuit. Hands up, Adam, please. Oh. Uh, it's Gary Ross. Uh, yeah. You agree? I, I concur. I concur. Gary Ross, final answer. Two points for the Misfits, Christian. Now they lead by four. All right, here's the next question mark. All right, gentlemen, for two more points. Who directed the family classic Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Oh, wow. The original. Who did direct the original? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I think we should go to multiple, multiple choice. choice. Uh, yeah. yeah, multiple choice. I'll get this. All right. For one point, here's your four options. Is it A, Roald Dahl, B, Guy Hamilton, C, Mel Stewart, or D, Alan Parker? I think it's either Guy Hamilton or Alan Parker. It's not. I don't think it's Alan Parker. I, I, that, that seems too pre 
date him, maybe. But also, I just don't think Five. that's the thing. Want to go, Guy let's Hamilton? Go, let's go, Guy Hamilton. Final answer, Guy Hamilton. Final answer. All right, that is incorrect. Okay. So at the end of this round, Witching Power will have an opportunity to steal that point, which could loom large. We now move to your next question, your third in round number two. In directors, who directed the 2014 biopic Unbroken? Um, that was Angelina Jolie, wasn't it? Or am I? Or am I? Am I crazy? Am I imagining that? Five. I don't have an answer. Four. Let's go multiple, just to be safe. Oh, oh multiple. multiple. Yeah, yeah. There. yeah. All right, multiple, multiple choice. Multiple choice. Your options for a point. Is it A. Angelina Jolie, B. J. A. Bayona, C. Jane Champion, or D. Scott Hicks? Let's go, Angelina. Good job. Final answer, Angelina Jolie. Final answer. That's another point for the Misfits. All right, so that was question number four, I believe. That was three. three. That was three. Here's number four. That's correct. Now they have a five-point lead. For a seven-point lead, possibly. Gentlemen, who directed 2001's The Fast and the Furious? Uh, um... It's the director of Daylight. It's the what is his name? Let's go multiple then, just because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rain wants to say Justin right. Lin, but I think that's wrong. So multiple choice. All right, for a point. Is it A. Simon West, B. John Singleton, C. Dominic Cena, or D. Rob Cohen? D. Rob Cohen. Rob Cohen. Yeah. Final answer. Final answer. That gives them a point, Christian, and they're up to a six-point lead. All right, here's question number five. Here's question number five. That's right. And now we are out of knockout range, but they can still take a sizable lead and possibly have a chance at a TKO in round three. Your penultimate question in the world of directors. Who directed the 2014 Disney adaptation Maleficent? Oh, my God. Maleficent. You know, I I'd know it if I heard it. Uh, yeah. God, directed? they're really asking some yeah. movies that don't exist. Five. Let's go multiple choice. Multiple choice. Your options for a point. Is it A, James Bobbin, B, Robert Stromberg, C, Bill Condon, or D, Rob Marshall? I think it's James Bobbin. Uh, what movie are we talking about again? Maleficent. <laughs> Maleficent. Uh, I don't think it's James Bobbin, is it? Do you think it's Condon or Marshall? Because I don't think it's Bill Condon. Or I don't think do it's you Condon. want to ask for a repeat? Repeat, or do repeat want... question. All right, first one. All right, your question. Who directed the 2014 Disney adaptation Maleficent? Your multiple choice options for a point. Is it A, James Bobbin, B, Robert Stromberg, C, Bill Condon, or D, Rob Marshall? Could it be Rob Marshall? Geesh. It could, but I just... I, I guess like we I go with James Bobbin. Has he had that big... Uh... Five. Do you, you have a better guess? Four. Um, I don't. I don't. Okay. Jim, James Bobbin. James Bobbin. Final answer. Final answer. That is incorrect. Sorry, man. So that's yeah. Another yeah, one point zero opportunity for the witching power. And now we move to your final question. In round number two in the world of directors for two points. Who directed the 1990 classic... Home Alone. Chris Columbus, right? Do we concur? Yeah. yeah. Chris Columbus, final answer. That gets them some momentum going into round three. Christian, two more points for the Misfits. All right. So a big wrap up in there for the Misfits. Only missed two questions, but they had so many steals plus a couple two-pointers that put them far ahead. All right. We're going to remove you guys. We're going to bring back the witching power and give them the opportunity to steal back those two points. You can stay in the waiting room while they do so. All right. So we're just going to bring back the witching power, give them the opportunity to, to steal those two points if okay. they can. So... That was a round. It was a good round. It was a smart round because even Adam had said it to Zip at that point. We can play around a little bit here if we need to. So, all right. Now here are Perry and Haley. Perry and Haley, you guys have the opportunity to steal two points. Um, your opponents have chose went down to multiple choice. You will get the questions and the answer that they chose that was incorrect. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Here it is. First one. Categories, directors. Thank you. Directors is the category, and here's the first one. 
Who directed the family classic Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Is it A, Roald Dahl, B, Guy Hamilton, C, Mel Stewart, D, Alan Parker, your opponents chose Guy Hamilton. Damn, that's what I was going to go for. What was the, do you remember what the last one is? Alan Parker? That was the only other one that I was like, maybe. Likewise, might as well, if we both thought that. Okay, D, final answer. Uh, it's incorrect, looking for Mel Stewart. Mel Stewart was the answer for that one. All right, and here's the other question. Who directed the 2014 Disney adaptation Maleficent? Is it A, James Bobbin, B, Robert Stromberg, C, Bill Condon, D, Rob Marshall? Your opponents chose James Bobbin. I think if it's not James Bobbin, it might be B, because I don't think it's the last two. I also thought B. Let's see how that turns out this time. B, final answer. That's correct. Robert Stromberg for one point. So steal yeah. happens there, and we get ourselves to 24-17. 24-17, the Misfits going up there. So we bring back the Misfits. We bring back Kaiser. We bring back Koi. And we see ourselves going into the third round where the Misfits have a 24-17 to lead. All right, Mark, round number three. That's right. It's a seven-point lead for the Misfits, but plenty of opportunity for the Witching Power to get back in the ball game. Round three could be the round that will determine the match once we go to sudden death overtime. Each team is going to give us a series of numbers. We need three numbers from each of you. They may range from one to 20. You may not pick the same number as the opposing team because each number corresponds to a different corner of movie, trivia, schmodown, know-how. Your first number is going to be your two-point question. Then you have a three-point question and a five-point question. This is the team format. So while there is no penalty for missing a question and no stealing around three, question for two points and question for three points are asked to individual team members. You may not confer with your teammate for the two or the three-pointer. We'll tell you the category of the two-pointer. Whoever wants to take it from the team may. The opposite team member will then answer the three-pointer. You may only confer with your teammate for the five-pointer point question so because the misfits enjoying a seven point lead over the witching power adam eric what three numbers from one to 20 feel lucky do you have any uh, uh lucky numbers adam my lucky number is 19. okay and, and i think theoretically in this thing to two choose two numbers in a row might get us uh, you know uh might be it might be a good strategy what's your lucky number don't get too cute <laughs> every numbers. time i try to like outguess it I, yeah. I, it ends up screwing me. So 19 is good. Um, 15. 15. 15. And 1. 19, 15, and 1 for the Witching Power. Uh, excuse me, for uh, the Misfits and for the Witching Power. You want to pick first, Haley? Yeah, let's do 6 for the number of cats we have between Yumi and Koi. I'm going to go with 7 because it's a cool number. Nice. Uh, Final one. Koi, you and want to pick it? Let's go with 20 because it's the last one we could pick. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So Can we, we have, change one of our numbers? No. 19, 15, and 1 for for the Misfits and for the Witching Power, 6, 7, and 20. All right. So we'll get free far and away DVD Blu-rays at the end of this match, like presents yeah. for everybody. 60 seconds. I actually had that on Blu-ray. This Can is I borrow your it? <laughs> yeah. Guys, but you, have you watched it? All right. You don't want to use it? You don't Guys, are you 60 seconds here? All right. Here we go, boys. We're going into the final round. We're looking good. We're feeling the vibe. I mean, Zipper's got his favorite blanket, so he's all comfortable with. I got a dog. Nice, nice new fresh haircut. Things are looking good. I, I'm ready to like, wait. The, the world's it. ended. I'll you meet know, you guys so. at Party City after this in the parking lot. We'll have a few drinks. Hey, don't forget, guys. It's a very silly thing we're doing here. If anybody sees Furiosa, let her know uh, I miss her. Perfect. We all miss her. Right, let's, go. let's go. All right. All right. So we are going to now let Koi have 60 seconds to talk to the Witching Power starting now. So that second round was just a matter of category. You played impeccably. Everything you knew, you knew. You used the actual rules of the game to get as far as you could, and then you were able to steal. Our last point is a point in the right direction. We had the momentum going into this. You were playing exceptionally well. That just wasn't our category. How are you feeling? Your positivity is everything right now. <laughs> I, I feel like it's it's hard to get so down about round two when we literally said that that was the only category we weren't going to be happy with, and that's what we've done. 
Sometimes we go, you know, on the funeral pyre ourselves as witches. Sometimes it works out. But in this case, we're going to go into the third round with the confidence that we just got a point. Haley, how are you feeling? I, I mean, I feel betrayed by my man, Kurt, but it's fine. <laughs> I'll move on. I feel great about round three. We're an underdog team. We're always good at coming back under pressure. This is a fourth quarter win that we're going to have. We are not in KO range. Let's get these points. Let's Five, win this thing and be unexpected. Four, Let's take care of it. Like witches. Three. Two, one. All right. All right. Gonna drop the managers out, and we are now unexpected like witches. I think he meant tumors. Anyway, go ahead. All right. So we are going to put the teams together. All right. Here we go. So we start with the witching power, who chose category number six. That's the realm of comedy. So for the two pointer, who would like to take the two point question? What do you think, Haley? Me or you? Um. I think you might have a better shot. Okay. I'm, I'm not the biggest comedy person. All right, I will take this one. All right, Perry Nemiroff's gonna take the two-pointer. Perry, here is your two-point question in the realm of comedy. Who plays the role of Harry Dunn in Dumb and Dumber? Jeff Daniels. For two points. All right. So Perry gets herself two points, and now Haley will have to hit the three-pointer here. Haley, you chose category seven three-pointer in the realm of Leonardo DiCaprio films. All right, here is the question. In the film Titanic, who plays Rose's wealthy fi um, fiance, Cal Hockley? Billy Zane. Three points. All right, so Witching Power now has the five-pointer. You can confer on this question same as in round number two remember to say final answer if you hit this then it will bounce to the misfits however if you miss it it will be a tko victory and three points for the dungeon here it is category 20 chosen by your manager would be 90s movies 90s movies for the five point question with three JTEs left. Here is the question. All right. What singer makes a cameo appearance? Excuse me, in 90s movies. What singer makes a cameo appearance on the plane scene in The Wedding Singer? Billy Idol. Billy Idol. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Billy Idol. Final answer. That is correct. All right. So twenty-seven. Like one thing I remember about that movie. <laughs> <laughs> they avoided. They avoided the TKO hitting all three, and we see ourselves twenty-seven twenty-four. The Misfits have an opportunity here, though, to take the game back here. And Mark, they started with number nineteen. Number nineteen. They did that, Christian, and this category that could pull them within a point of Witching Power's lead is a big-time director who makes a lot of neat movies, and he is named Martin Scorsese. How do you feel, Adam? Would I think for two take points, that? either one of us could get that, uh, but uh, how are you feeling on Scorsese? I've seen, like, just over half of his movies. You know, he's made a ton, so there is definitely a chunk that I haven't seen. Uh, Kaiser right, is saying for, for you to take it. So. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. It's my All number, right. 19. Now, here we go. So here is the uh, here is the question mark. Two points. All right. Number 19, Bernie Kosar's number. Now nice. it's Scorsese movies. Nice. For two points. Pull within one. Here is your and Martin Scorsese question. Hands up, Adam. Who plays Naomi? the second wife of Leonardo DiCaprio's character in The Wolf of Wall Street. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Second one. All right, for two points. Who plays Naomi? the second wife of Leonardo DiCaprio's character in The Wolf of Wall Street.
five, four, three, two, one. Nothing. All right, we're looking for Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie was the answer. All right, so I, knew I couldn't think of her name. Well, now instead of winning the game on the three, they can tie the game with the three. They can tie the game with the three here. Should Eric Zipper hit his three pointer here, Mark? And that was category, excuse me, number 15. It was category 15, Christian. And that is going to be a three point question in the world of new releases. Okay. Movies that came out the last 12 to 18 months before the uh, apocalypse with no water or oil. Here's your question for the tie Which 2020 film stars Issa Rae? and Lakeith Stanfield. The Lovebirds. Final answer? Five. That's it. Ran out final, of time. final answer. That is incorrect. We're looking for the photograph. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So here's where we are now. So now the misfits need to hit this five in order to win the game. If they hit it, they win. If they miss, then the witching power will go on to play the founding fathers. All right. They chose category number one, Mark. They did number one with a bullet, literally, because it's crime movies. That was crime movie. Wait, is that what it was? Crime movies? Okay, crime movies. Sorry. And gentlemen, this will determine the outcome of the match. You get the question right, you win, you advance. You get the question wrong, the witching power will be doing the advancing. Five points. Here's the question. Pablo Schreiber, O'Shea Jackson Jr., 50 Cent and Cooper Andrews have roles in what recent crime film? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, O'Shea Jackson Jr. Right. Um, and 50 Cent. There was that, the RZA directed movie, Cutthroat City is the only Five. one I think it could be. Four. Can we use Great. a repeat, please? Repeat All right, last repeat. All right, this is in the category of crime movies for five points. Pablo Schreiber, O'Shea Jackson Jr., 50 Cent, and Cooper Andrews have roles in what recent crime film? That's my best guess, is that yeah. is very recent, but... Yeah, I'm uh, drawing a blank. Five, four... Final answer, Cutthroat three. City. And your winners! Advancing to the next round, the witching power. The answer mark was Den of Thieves. Den of Thieves was the answer. Big win here. All right, guys, we're going to remove him here for a moment, and we're going to bring back Corey Jandrew, wherever the hell Corey went. He, I think he, he's, his internet went out. I don't even know if he knows what happened. What a comeback. We haven't seen a comeback like this since Ben Bateman and Merle played. You guys advance here, and it was absolutely <laughs> insane what happened here because it looked like Adam uh, knew that Margot Robbie question afterwards, and, and it looked like they both knew the, uh, the Den of Thieves question afterwards. So, Perry, the magic seems to be continuing with you. What are you doing? I, I don't know. Like I don't. I'm so shocked right now. I don't even know what to say because as much as I'm, I'm trying to stay positive and keep saying to myself, "Fun, fun, fun." I was very disappointed when we got that Kurt Russell category, and we said to ourselves that was the one we didn't want, and then we basically blew the second round. But clearly, like we know, we know our stuff, and I think we proved that well enough in round one and round three, and now we still have a lot of momentum going forward. Haley, so look, this was um, it, Perry said it as Coy was talking to you guys. And she's like, "Your positivity is good." Did you think that it was over going into round number three? 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's a pretty big point difference. It, odds were low. I was, and I was a little down. Do you, know, you know that they won? They, uh, yeah, I was there for all of it, and then my computer overheated as it happens. So, <laughs> so, so the only, uh, the only Funko Pops I allowed myself to collect are actually Kurt Russell. <laughs> I was actually very, very personally offended by how that went down, and I, I feel a great peace. I was waiting. I was waiting for a big trouble in Little China question the entire time. So literally, I heard the and your winner, and I heard the witching, and then it cut out because all of my stuff overheated. So I only knew, and then I scrambled, got a microphone. Can I just say that that was exactly how I knew you'd play, except for a category that we were worried about from the beginning, and that was exactly how we knew they'd play. So win or lose at the end there, that I was so confident, I was so proud, whether or not that went our way or not, that was exactly how I wanted us to go. I'm glad we won, but what an incredible match from both parties. That was, you guys are champions. Perry Emeroff, you are, have been playing uh, really well this season. You had yourself in the exhibition match. You played in the match against Kalinowski, against Riley, in the horror free-for-all. I mean, there's all of these things that you've done so far and you start up here, and now you're going up to play Dan Merle and John Roca. You've played against uh, some of these, some of your past Collider people in the past here too. What is it going to be like now facing the former champions, Dan Merle and uh, John Roca? It's it's really weird, like not even just uh, Collider colleagues, but it's weird to think about at this point how many Schmodown champions I will have played. Because I, I never thought it would be possible. You guys used to see me sitting behind the scenes going through questions. And I used to watch, you know, the Dan Merles, the John Rokas, and the Mark Rileys of the world play, have fun, and win Schmodown. And I just sat there and watched. And now I'm actually in the ring with them. It's, it's kind of weird. And there is nobody that I would want to go up against a duo like that with than Haley. Can, can I also Thank say you. that, that yeah. uh, everyone doubting the separate knowledge, I think today really proved that everyone said pairing these two horror experts together would be just a, a horror centric knowledge. But we only had like one or two horror questions. And I, I really think this showed what a diverse amount of knowledge both of these women have, how well they play together, how well they know the rules. They know the game and they know the contents of the game. So I just overall, I feel like all of the things that people said online, the internet, uh, we just we just bested today, and I'm so proud. And we have a really good coach. I mean, I mean, it looks like you guys are working really well together. Mark, did you you had some? I was just going to add that. Remember when we all hated Billy Zane in 1997's Titanic? Well, some 23 years later, finally, it took two witches to turn that power into their benefit. He's well, a they, cool guy. We're going to listen to your friend Billy Zane. Like Zane now, but look, the the other thing is that uh, it, it's it's funny because that steal turned out to be pretty big for you guys when you came back in there to be able to get that extra point, stay alive, because it looked like it was like knockout. This is one of the biggest comebacks in Schmodown history because it looked like you were about to be knocked out and it was going to be over. You steal, you're able to steal that point because your opponents had a lot of steals off of you. They were, they had a great, really good second round. They're playing great. And they, they just unfortunately missed their questions in, in round all their questions in round number three, that just kind of ultimately sunk them. But uh, I don't know. I just think that Koi, any, any, what advice do you give them going into the tournament now to face a John Roca and, uh, and Dan Merle? Well, I think going into this next match, we're only going to train a little differently because it's overall knowledge that we're focusing on. It's not a specificity. That's why we were a little worried about the broad strokes of disaster. In hindsight, we would have kept disaster. So I think when we go into the second round, we're going to have a little bit longer of a conversation. I'm going to make sure the confidence is there going into it. I'm not going to give any specifics because I know they watch this. Um, but I, at the same time, I think it's just going to be slightly escalating the amount of stuff we, we research. And it's going to be focusing on the confidence of how they played round one and three, because I love that they both bounced back. I love that at no point was I really worried. I, I meant what I said going into the third round that we'd come back and win this. I, uh, you know, Conor McGregor, Mystic Mac, how you play tactics, how you believe things happen, how you manifest and how you go. And I think the same, like uh, everyone doubted us. Everyone doubted Perry with Kalinowski. Everyone's going to doubt us going in to play the Founding Fathers. The Founding Fathers do have weaknesses. The Founding Fathers have lost this year. The Founding Fathers do have kinks in the armor. And I think we're going to find them, we're going to exploit them, we're going to train accordingly, and I think it's ours. And a lot of people won't think that's even possible, and that's going to be even more fun to win. All right, so congratulations here to both Haley 
and to Perry and to the Quirky Mercs who pick up a big two points. And look how big that smile is on Perry Nemiroff's face as she wins another match there. Congratulations, Haley. Congratulations, Perry and Coy, Quirky Mercs. The witching power advancing into the tournament with a big comeback here. Thank you, everybody, and congratulations. All right, we're going to have them go. Mark, I got to say goodbye to you, my friend. You got to jump real quick. Yeah, it's not because I don't want to field any more questions about Kaiser and that mysterious Western Union, but congratulations to the Misfits. They played a hell of a game, and I will say Kaiser coached a game, and all credit goes to the witching power. Amazing comeback. Look forward to seeing more of them in the tournament. Christian, I trust you to ask the gentleman your best attempt at a question, and then whatever is going to happen with Kaiser is going to happen. Sorry, Kaiser, I got to go right now. Good riddance. All right, Kaiser, oops, that's not Kaiser. Kaiser and Zipper, Wit. Guys, obviously, look, this was uh, this was something, it was, it was a big, it was a big match for you guys. You were playing really well, playing extremely well in that second round. The questions, the way that you played together, um, and then the steals. And then I, it looked like once that question hit with Margot Robbie, Adam, it all went down. Now, now I asked as Zip and Wit, you guys, it seemed like you both knew each other's two and threes. I don't know if anyone knows the photograph. I feel like that movie kind of came and went like many movies in 2020 that got weird releases or got lost in the shuffle. Um, but yeah, Margot Robbie, I, mean, I know Adam, you've said before that uh, names sometimes just- That just was a total name fart. And uh, I mean, of course, everybody knows Margot Robbie. Of course, of course, we know that she. Uh, it's like uh, the most famous person in the uh, world. It's, like, it's exactly like if I had to name one actor in the whole movie, I'd probably know her before Leonardo DiCaprio, and I couldn't pull it. I couldn't pull it. I didn't want to waste our last repeat. Right. So, well, that, it's while I brain fart. And speaking of which, Zip. So, and and when I said uh, Den of Thieves at the end there, you seemed to throw your hands up and go, "Of course." So, do you think that you, with another JT, you might have gotten it? I got hung up on the word "recent" in the question. Um, because Den of Thieves was like a year or two ago, and so in my head, I was th- I I could have sworn that Fifty Cent was also in Cutthroat City, and Fifty Cent was the only person in there that I knew was in Den of Thieves. Um, and so I just it it just wasn't for whatever reason it just didn't enter my radar. My brain didn't think it was recent enough. Yeah, well, I mean, so look, so Kaiser. Again, this just seems to be that the chips didn't fall for the dungeon this season at all. Just like there was a lot of, I mean, it, it, it didn't, it had nothing to do with not having good competitors because everybody that you had played really well. I mean, the, the Misfits today played incredible. Nets played really good. Zipper played really good in the singles tournament. So was it just bad luck this season? What do you think it was? You know what it is? This faction doesn't care about you. This faction doesn't care about fans. This faction doesn't care about any but ourselves. Okay, so that's the first thing everybody better understand. We're not your heroes, we're not your friends. Okay, we don't like any of you. And these these managers better be on blast because I'm creating a, 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 I'm creating an army of evil next year. I'm going after all your players. You heard me, Roxy. You heard me, Tom, because I've had enough of this. I mean, I got to get Lakeith Stansfield senior film at USC, and then all of a sudden Billy Zane, huh? In the most popular movie of all time. I've had enough. I'll see you in 2021. Oh, oh, you just you just left. Oh. Well. There's everybody else. All right. Well, Kaiser took off. He's a man of many words. Yeah, it seems like it. But uh, look, do you guys? Uh, so let me ask this. Now that Kaiser's not here, Zip, you played. You played in multi divisions. You had a great run in all those divisions. I was listening to the rundown over the weekend. Is Kaiser the guy to take you to the next level, or do you think that you might have to go somewhere else? I don't know, man. Um, you know, obviously, I've gotten a lot out of being with Kaiser. Um, but this run of losses is like, as you can see from the mask, this isn't just because I don't want people to see how upset I am. I'm ready to just, like, sever my connection to society and fully set off into the wasteland. And who knows what I will be or who I will be when I come back, you know? Like... Th- I can't speak to next year because the thought of making it to the end of this year sounds like unfathomable. Like 2020 feels like it's going to stretch on forever. So I can't say whether I'll stay with Kaiser or not. Who knows? I think I will, but nothing means anything anymore. The world is meaningless and life is pain. So whatever. 
uplifting speech there by Zipper. Uh, Wit, how about yourself? How do you how do you feel about uh, the dungeon and what's the future for it and what's the future with you? Well, I, I think I landed in the right place. Uh, as I've said, there's two types of people in the classroom. Those are those that sit up front, raise their hands, and those are the ones that sit in the back and trade Fangoria magazines. A dungeon is the sit in the back and trade Fangoria magazines and get Ds or, or charm their way up to a C minus. But uh, so I feel perfectly comfortable in the dungeon and uh, and, the, and the people that we're playing with here. And, uh, you know, I got a few uh, Lakeith Stanfield movies to watch. Uh, but other than that, I think... Uh, I don't know. I, I think that the dungeon's got a lot of good going on in it. It's a lot of players that didn't win that should that did incredibly well, and yeah, uh, and I think it's a good crew of people. I think we all landed with the right people. So, frankly, I hope we all stay together because we're pretty. We got pretty strong together training each other this year, and we're all, despite you know, this loss or the last loss, we're all way better than we were at the beginning of the season as 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 a faction. I agree. I mean, you guys, it definitely is a tight knit group. There's no doubt about it. And Zip, I will say this about you, uh, my friend here. You have played extraordinarily well this season. I think Thank that you. you have played very well. And it seems to me that you have upped your game tremendously from every season. And, you know, and I've seen great players in the past who just had that season right before they break out to other uh, greatness. I think of Ben Bateman. I think of, uh, you know, I think of Mark Riley. I think of Dan Merle when he came back. So, this is maybe a stepping stone here for taking all those big hits and then having a great season uh, come season eight. So, I hope so, man. Thank you. I really, I really do hope so. One of these days, the way that I play is going to translate into wins. It has to happen eventually, right? I believe that it will. So Eric Zipper, Adam Witt, thank you guys for joining us here today. Tough loss, uh, and we will see you guys well, we'll see you guys soon, but we'll see you play next season. So thank you very much to Adam Witt and to the Z-Man. All right. So that was it, ladies and gentlemen. That was the match between the Witching Power and the Misfits with the Witching Power taking the victory once again, 27-24 over and coming back. A massive, massive comeback. And we see ourselves with a Founding Fathers Witching Power match for the first round. For Mark Ellis, I'm Christian Harloff. We'll see you next time.